really terrifying times going to the bathroom on this trip, really. Hey there, and welcome to Ticket Before You Kick It, a podcast helping you conquer your adventure bucket list. I'm Alexandra, your favorite traveling mermaid and adventure blogger. This episode is Backwards Zoo, talking about a African safari. No, it's not the web browser. It's the one that's way cooler. Stay tuned for things I've learned, when I went, where I went, and how it was probably one of the coolest things I've done in my entire life. You can read more and sign up for the newsletter at thebucketlistmermaid.com for more bucket list inspiration and travel resources. Now, without further ado, let's talk about the African safari. Now, a traditional African safari has been very high on my list for a very long time. I mean, who doesn't want to go run around and look at cool animals? and witness all of that incredible culture. I mean, it is no wonder that just the words African Safari spark so much inspiration for adventure travelers everywhere. And let me tell you, the hype is real. I cannot hype it up enough. And my bar was pretty high. So after a lot of research, I decided to go to Tanzania. Now, this was the first stop on my epic seven-month backpacking trip solo after college. And man, let me tell you, it hit it off with a high note. I am naturally a pretty positive and enthusiastic person, so I do hype things up a lot, Uh, but I will hype this up to the moon and back because it's literally that cool. So into the stories. I ended up going on an African safari, as I said, after I finished university, and this was around June. The visa was a little tough, however, I did it, and I also had to get some special immunizations and vaccinations. I believe it was yellow fever in order to get my visa for Africa, which was a little interesting to go through the NHS in the UK, but I did it. It was fine. Now, I first started out on a little tiny hut by the airport, and this was just Africa. I don't know why it just hit me so hard that I was in Africa when I hit this hotel. It was beautiful. There was plants everywhere. It was that traditional style of hut. I had to sleep with the mosquito net, and it was just this huge sigh of relief until I figured out I had no hot water. But other than that, it was a huge sigh of relief that I was in Africa and I was finally here after waiting for so long to make this happen. After that, we split up into tinier groups and then we all went into the Jeep and we did a little mini safari and then we ended up going to a campsite. Now, I was slash am a broke college student, so I couldn't afford to stay in these luxury lodges and camps, so I ended up camping, and honestly, I'm not sure that I would do it another way, because how often do you get to tell people that you've camped in the Serengeti, like, next to a lion? It's probably one of the coolest things I can say about myself. So although I did do the cheapest accommodation option, 10 out of 10, Really. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. That first safari night was unlike anything I ever thought it would be. We watched a sunset go over Serengeti National Park, and no joke, we watched the sunset over this rock, and the rock had baby lion cubs and a mama lion, and they were playing on this rock over the sunset over the Serengeti. I'm not gonna lie, I cried. Don't judge me. I cried. It was so beautiful. (laughs) And it was kind of an adrenaline rush. Like, I just could not believe that I was actually there doing this. And I was so blessed to be able to get to do this. Anyway, so then we went back to the camp. We had a bonfire. I got to meet some other people from my group. I was technically traveling solo, but I met so many friends there. One of the people in the group actually upgraded so that she could get her own room. And I was the lucky, quote unquote, lucky person who got to also have the single room. However, we were camping. So this means that I camped by myself. And I really thought when I booked this tour that I would be camping, you know, like outside of the Serengeti. Nope, I I was in there. And super funny story, in the middle of the night, there was this huge thunderstorm. I could hear lions roaring and I waited for the thunderstorm to pass And then I thought to myself, oh my gosh, I have to pee. And they had set up this like little portable toilet for us to pee in. And I went outside of my tent. I got all my courage, went outside of the tent. And no joke, there was a hyena. 
that was about 20 feet away. I was so scared to go to the bathroom by myself because I was so scared that this hyena was going to like chase and eat me. I don't even know if they do that. That this hyena was going to get me that I just peed right outside of my tent and I made direct eye contact with this hyena the entire time. And then I like dove back in my tent. It was so gross. And I just zipped it up super fast. And I was like, did that just happen? Oh my gosh. <laughs> These are the stories you only get with adventure travel, I swear. So the next day we went on a full game drive. I think we saw four out of the big five. Now, for those of you who don't know, the big five are lion, leopard, rhino, elephant, and buffalo. And on that day, I saw a lion, both male and female. Wow. A leopard, very tiny, very tiny in a tree. And an elephant. And it had a baby elephant with it which was just a whole experience in itself. Now then after that, we moved from our camp in the Serengeti and we ended up going to a camp that overlooked the Ngorogoro Crater. And this crater was massive. I've seen vast landscapes before, but this one takes the cake. It was huge. And this campsite was so nice. We had a whole view of the entire thing. We actually had facilities this time. And staying on brand with my other travel story, when I went to the bathroom this time with a buddy, we saw a warthog and a zebra. And according to the guide, the warthogs are really mean. So again, just really terrifying times going to the bathroom on this trip, really. And then we did a safari within the Ngorogoro crater, and then that was the time when I saw the other two of the big five, which is a rhino, it was very, very tiny, but I did see it, and an African buffalo. I do have to say, although it is really fun to see the big five, and I was fortunate enough to see the big five, there were so many other animals, so if you don't see the big five, don't think that your safari is a failure. Honestly, my favorite thing in the world was to see the flocks of flamingos and also the baby zebras. And pro tip, I would kind of research what you do want to see and then base your safari location on what you want to see and what time of year. Like for example, you might be really interested in seeing the wildebeest migration in the Masamara from July to October, or you might be interested in seeing some gorillas and then you would go to Rwanda, Uganda, or the Congo. So there's different places in Africa that you can go and different times of year where you're not guaranteed to see anything, but you might be able to increase your chances of seeing certain wildlife depending on this. So after we were done with that final safari, we ended up making our way to the coast and we ended up going to Zanzibar and I laid on a pristine African white sand crystal clear blue water beach for two days and I got the worst sunburn of my life. I ended up talking to my newly made friend since I was traveling solo and I begged her to rub aloe vera all over my body because I was so sunburned and in so much pain and I apologized profusely but luckily she was a doctor so she didn't care. Oh man this was a journey. <laughs> However, with that being said, sunburnt and all, it is still to this day one of my favorite trips that I have ever taken. And if it is within your budget and you have the call to go on an African safari, do not even hesitate. Book it right now and go tomorrow. Dead serious. Now, lucky for you, there are several places that you can go within Africa to do a safari experience. I went to Tanzania through G Adventures, which was incredible. I've also heard amazing things about Kenya. That's where our group was before, and they were absolutely raving about it. And the Masamara is known for their big cats. So if you want to see those lions and those leopards, I would recommend Kenya. Another one is South Africa. They have a bunch of reserves in there, probably one of the most famous national parks would be the Kruger National Park and there is a bigger chance to see the big five in Kruger. This was actually my second choice when I thought I was going to be cruising along South Africa. I ended up going to Tanzania instead. Another one is Uganda and Rwanda, the gorilla treks. Oh that's on my bucket list. If you've done that let me talk to you because I've heard this is life-changing. Now I would also consider what kind of accommodations. As I said before, I did adventure camping, so I was pitching tents. I was basically doing the lowest that you can go because African safaris are expensive. There are some lodges that range from two to four stars, but they are quite basic. And honestly, if you're adventure traveling anyway, I would just go for the cheaper option. Just camp. Just go for the full adventure. And next they do have the big fancy safari lodges, but these are going to be some dollar bills, if you know what I mean. And the tented camps, which again, are going to flatten your wallet a wee bit. 
However, this is probably the most stereotypical, like those really luxury camps that don't move. And they, some of them have like air conditioning. Like, wow, you know you've made it in luxury when you have air conditioning on a safari. I was dripping. That's disgusting. Moving on. You also need to decide if you're going to go to a park or a reserve. The national parks are owned, protected, and regulated by the local government. For example, like the Serengeti National Park and Kruger National Park is regulated by the government. Although I did like it, there was a lot of regulation on where we could go and where we could bring our cars. And I understand because that protects the animals and I'm all for that. But there's also private reserves which are privately owned and there are strict amount of vehicles, there are fewer people and there are very strict wildlife procedures. Again, I'm down for it. Protect that wildlife at all costs. However, if you're on a private reserve, this gives you access to a more enriched and exclusive safari experience, such as off-roading, guided nature walks, and even after-hour game drives. They also provide you with chances to see animals that you might not always see. For example, the Nagala Private Game Reserve is known for its lions and even a rare white lion, or the Pinda, or the Finda Pinda, oh goodness, is known for its cheetah and its black rhino. Now, obviously, the massive downfall of the private reserved is the dollar dollar bills go away quite quickly but you know it's once in a lifetime so if you can swing it go for it however when i checked this off of my bucket list i went to the national park and it was still one of the most amazing experiences that i've ever checked off on my bucket list so don't panic you'll still have an incredible time no matter where you go now one question i get a lot when to plan your trip now the peak season especially where i was in tanzania is from June to October. I went in June, but this is in the middle of dry season. So this means that the shrubs and the trees are pretty much leafless and there's less food and water, so you might see more animals congregated around the watering holes, and they also don't have those lush trees to hide in, so you're going to be able to spot them easier. Now, as you might have previously gathered from the time that I turned into an actual human lobster in Zanzibar, it's going to be hot during this time. So that is the trade-off. It's going to be dry and hot. It's worth it to see the animals, but please do not forget to hydrate bring a hat, bring sunglasses, and bring like enough sunscreen to bathe in. Or maybe that's just me who needed to bathe in sunscreen because I'm really pale. And next, let's talk about how, you know, I thought that an African safari was such an interesting experience, and this is why. It really is a backward zoo. Because if you think about it, if you go to a zoo, they take the animals from their environment and they put them into cages in your environment, and you view them there. But in here, they take you from your environment and put you in a cage, aka a jeep, and then they put you in their environment. So it really is like a backward zoo. And be warned that if you do go on an African safari and you check this off of your bucket list, you might be ruined forever. Because I go to zoos now and I'm like, meh. Not only is it kind of sad for the animals, but it's just like, meh. Like, I can go to a zoo and I can see a lion. Okay, that's cool. But after seeing a baby cub wrestle with a sunset in the background, there's just, it, it kind of ruins you a little bit. So keep that in mind. However, I just think it's beautiful because it just forces you to have constant gratitude and respect for the location, culture, and wildlife. With that being said, the animals are free ranged. This is why I would recommend always getting a tour, which I will link in the show notes and the blog post. Because A, they can help you find the more elusive species that you might come across, they can help keep you safe, and they're also a plethora of knowledge. But I would definitely listen to them, because you've seen those crazy videos where, like, the cheetahs are laying on the jeeps. Like, I don't know if I'd want to be by myself in that situation. And it might not even be allowed. Now, one reason that I would recommend going on an African safari is it's really an emotional experience. I don't know if you could tell by the fact that I cried during the sunset and I'm not a super emotional person, but it was hard not to be emotional because it's more beautiful than you think. It's more beautiful than you think to see these animals in their location and they are thriving and they are not caged and they're just beautiful and it's really like the circle of life. Like I should just start singing Lion King. And I think people underestimate how much of an emotional experience this really is. That's one reason that I would recommend this because it's very beautiful to witness this kind of of nature and witness this kind of wildlife and this kind of circle of life. And there's one thing for sure, you will definitely not come back the same person. It 
changes you to see wildlife in this manner. It changes you to see these hyenas stalking a zebra. You know, it's this is truly a once in a lifetime bucket list activity that cannot be missed if you want to do it. Also, on that note, there was so much culture that I got to see on this trip. I got to go to a local village. They got to cook for me. The food was absolutely incredible. I got to meet some of the people. I got to go inside of their church. I got to play with the kids there. So not only are you seeing so much wildlife, but you also have the opportunity for cultural immersion, and that is also life-changing. I met some of the most amazing people there who taught me their philosophies on life and positivity and, you know, how to be a better person, and it was just incredible in every sense. Now, I do have to say who I would recommend this for. I think I would recommend this for people who are really, really into wildlife and culture and also photography. Oh, that's another tangent. Please bring a camera. I'll talk about that next. But I would be very hesitant to bring families here unless they have a very special appreciation for what they are going to see. For example, I don't know if it would have been as powerful if I would have gone earlier in my life. At the time that I went in my life, I was in a very good space to receive all the information and to really develop a gratitude towards having this experience checked off my bucket list. But if I was a kid, I don't know, I think I might have found it a little boring, especially if you aren't seeing all the animals all the time. But some kids are super into that, so I would just be a little hesitant if you're like going on a family trip. There is a lot of driving involved. It's pretty much being in a car all day long just looking for animals, which can be very fun, but if you have little, little kids, there's a possibility they might get bored. And if you're going to spend all this money, because let's be honest, this is not cheap, maybe just wait a few years until they can fully comprehend and appreciate the entire situation. Or if you're a photographer, and if you're not a photographer, that leads me to my biggest regret on this entire trip, which was not bringing a camera. How could I possibly believe that my measly iPhone was going to capture the majesticness of a male lion? I will never know. So dumb. It got to the point where I was trying to take photos with my phone through binoculars. I did actually get some good shots. However, luckily, there was a couple on their honeymoon, there was a couple people who had got cameras, we all kind of shared, we all put them in a pile, and these photos are incredible. So even if you're not a super big photographer, I don't know what it is about this experience, but you want to take photos of every single tiny little thing. Like an ostrich will move two feet and you'll be like, oh, I need to get another picture. Oh. So do yourself a favor, don't be like me, rent a camera or bring your own camera so that you're not spending the entire time trying to get a photo through binoculars with your iPhone. And special thanks if you are listening to this and you were that honeymoon couple or the people who let me borrow their camera. Huge shout out to you. You are the heroes of my African safari. Yes, if you do want to see all of these photos that we threw into a pile, again, it wasn't really one person versus another. It was just, it was a very group effort to get these photos. They are straight out of Nat Geo and my jaw dropped. All of our jaws dropped when we saw how these photos turned out. So if you do want to see those, definitely head over to my website, thebucketlessmermaid.com, so that you can see all of these incredible photos. And maybe you'll get your own photos someday. So what do you think? Are you a nature enthusiast who this is on the top of their bucket list? If not, it should be. And do you have plans to go on a safari or is this on your bucket list? Don't forget to let me know on social media at The Bucket List Mermaid or on my website, thebucketlistmermaid.com. Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode of Ticket Before You Kick It. If you did enjoy the show, please don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform again or leave a review. This was one of my favorite adventures, so it's going to be really hard to top this one, but we're going to try. So we will see you in the next episode and don't forget to keep adventuring. Ring.